So today I'm going to show you a really simple way of doing sort of marquetry or parquetry. Hands up, have you done marquetry or parquetry? One? Okay, so if you didn't know, it's basically veneer art, you use different coloured veneers to make some art and you can put it on top of boxes or tables. This is, if you're a beginner, this is very simple because the difficult thing with marquetry is you've got to cut the pieces perfectly to fit together without any gaps. But this, you actually want gaps because it's a mosaic. Um, so it's a really easy way of like, getting started in woodworking in like, veneer art. Or if you're you know, established in it, it's, like, it's very fun and you can do it. I go onto my boxes if any of you see my boxes. Um, but I think this would work really well if you're doing it on top of coffee tables. Or just wall art. So the first thing you want to do is you want to prep the area. And I've got some clear tape here. You want to use the cheap stuff because the cheap stuff isn't very tacky. And if you used expensive clear tape, then when you're gluing the mosaic down, it can pull the grain back up. So this is just some cheap clear tape. And I'm sticking it down with some masking tape. Sticky side up. And with the mosaic, you can do any bit you like. You can like make it up as you go along. Or you can print off something, your own design or a picture online. And I'm just going for like an A4 size here. But you can do it any size you like. And yeah, if you didn't know the difference between marquetry and parquetry, is marquetry is veneer art where you're making a picture, like a landscape or a or a portrait. Parquetry is you're making a pattern. So we're doing sort of more parquetry. And this doesn't need to be perfect. You just need a sticky surface. It helps if you don't scratch it up. So if you were going to print off a picture to copy, you can slide this under the tape so then when you're placing the tiles down, you can see, you can, you know, trace it and copy exactly where it's going. Okay. That's good. Now, the veneers, you want to use standard 0.6mm thick veneers and you can use natural wood if you just want natural tones or you can use dyed wood. Dyed woods are normally popular because it's very light and it takes stain really well and you, you can get the colour throughout the veneer and it hasn't got a very prominent grain so you can cut it really easily so it's perfect for veneering. I've got some pre-cut tiles here just to speed it up but I'll show you how I cut them. So there's different ways to cut the tiles. For big ones, what I'll do first is with a marking knife. Now, if you if you want it really accurate, you can rest the ruler on the knife and like go along like that. But the luxury with mosaic making is you actually don't want all the tiles to be the exact same size. If they're all perfectly square and um, you know the exact same size, it's going to look like you, you bought it. It's going to look like a machine stamped these out. So it's quite good if they're different sizes. And then once you've got the strips like that, because this is just thin veneer, you can use some heavy duty scissors just to snip them. I wouldn't go with a marking knife cross grain, because it's, it's, this is just so much quicker than a knife is. It might you know, break out the veneer. If I'm doing tiny mosaics, so I've made a mosaic this size that has 2,000 pieces in it, and that's using tiles that are on the camera here that are like 3.4 millimeters and they're really fiddly and obviously the smaller the tile you go the more detailed you can make the uh, mosaic obviously today we don't have a lot of time so these pieces i'm just done with the uh, scissors but if you're going to do small yeah that's what i was going to say if you're going to do it small then i'll get a sharp chisel and with that thin strip so if i was going to cut the strip that thinly I then get a sharp chisel and then just like gently like punch these out and then you'll get a really clean edge. Sometimes depending on the wood, scissors don't, don't cut that cleanly. This is popular and it's kind of like 
like a dream. Okay. So, like I said, you can have a picture underneath that you can reference from. But normally with these larger tiles, these mosaics, the simpler the pattern you do, um, you know, it, it, the nicer it looks, I think. If you're doing, you know, really small tiles, I do like Roman mosaic floors. And then you can go really detailed. And the gap I'm leaving, obviously that's a really big gap here. And what I'd probably do then is a thin piece of wood to go in that. To fill that in. And obviously, you know, this isn't my neatest work. I hope you get the idea, yeah. The gap I'm leaving in between is about two millimeters. You don't want the tiles touching at all because when we're filling it in later, then the, the epoxy won't get into the gaps. So. Using, if I was cutting really small tiles, I probably won't have time to do the whole thing. For example, a couple of these tiles. Picking these up with your hands is a nightmare and placing them down accurately. So I'd use a sharp mark knife and you can pick it up like that and place it down accurately. And you don't need to worry about the hole you're creating with a marking knife because this side is going to get veneered down onto your substrate. So it's going to be inside the board. You're not going to see a hole you create. So as you can see, the knife is really easy to work with with the smaller pieces. filled up your mosaic with all the, all, all the wood, then you've got to veneer it down onto your board. You don't want to glue it onto solid wood because that's going to expand and contract and the filler you put in, cracks will start to appear. So you want to glue it down onto a man-made board, hardboard, MDF, plywood. So once you've got yeah, your mosaic, I'm cutting it with a knife, and then you've got your sheet, like that. Okay, and you can see a gap in between all the tiles. Okay. So that, that is ugly. It's down this side. So I've got a piece of plywood here. This would be good for a placemat or a box, the top of one of my boxes. And when you're gluing this down, I've got Type On 1 here, but you want to use, I would recommend Type On Cold Press Premier, because it's perfect for veneering. And this is like a very crucial stage. The veneer, the, the mosaic will be ruined if you have too much glue. It's got to be the thinnest layer of glue. The best way you can apply that is with a glue spreader. It's like a, uh, like a foam roller. And you get, you know, just a hairline thickness of glue. If there's too much glue on, when, once you stick this mosaic down, that glue is going to start to creep into the gaps, you know, and fill in those gaps. And then later on, when you fill it in, there'll be glue splotches all, all over the mosaic. So you want a really thin layer of glue. I'm going to, go, this is a, the smallest mosaic I've done, but I'll just show you. And it's better to add too little glue. Uh, and then you can always add more. And yeah, so today I don't have the spreader, but I'll just use this piece of wood and I'll get a really thin, like that. And then you want to stick this down. Now, 
there's a few different ways you can clamp this. You can, if it was a big mosaic, I'd put it in my vacuum bag. Whatever clamping method you use, you've got to put it between two flat boards, so MDF or plywood. And it's the exact same process. If I put it in my vacuum bag without these boards, it could just, you know, clamp it into a curve. These boards will keep it flat. So, and then, yeah, I've just got some one-handed grip clamps here. And I had such a thin amount of glue there. I'm, I'm going to leave this 24 hours. So come back in 24 hours. <laughs> No, <laughs> it, the cold press, the Type 1 cold press, says it sets in 45 to 2 hours, but I would still leave it 24 hours before moving on to the next step, you don't want to risk it. But, like Blue Peter, I did one earlier, once it comes out the clamps, it will look like this. So I've got two different mosaics. This is, this is very rushed, but... You can pass this one around, you can see the gaps are still, you can, there's gaps still in, in between the tiles, okay? And you want that. And now it's time to fill it, this is, you know, the most fun. And you can fill it with wood filler, resin, epoxy. The simplest way I've found is using just two part Gorilla epoxy you can get from any home centre. And you want to pigment it. And you can pigment it with graphite powder if you want it to be black. You can pigment it even with food colouring, just anything to change the colour of it. The best method I've found is mica powder. This company is Mosu. I got it from Amazon, it's pretty cheap. And it comes in any, it just comes in so many colours. Red, blue. I like black, I think black looks really nice. But I think the most common colour Thank you. I think the most common colour is white. But I'll go for black today. And you want a little bit. You don't need too much pigment. And you don't need to worry about it changing the chemistry. It's still going to set. And even if it is a bit weaker, you know, the epoxy in the end, this is just a decorative piece. It's not a joint. So you don't need to worry about that. So I'll keep this connection. Let's get some gloves on. I feel like a dentist now. Okay. Open wide. Okay. So, this is the powder. This is sold, you know, for in craft shops. It's used for ceramics, jewelry making. It's literally just a coloured powder. When I first started, I was so, like, thinking too much about how am I going to colour this? I didn't know what to get, but anything to colour it. Amazon, mica powder, if you want to come up after, you can take a picture of this. And it comes with a spoon, which is very nice. So, I'm going to squeeze this two-part epoxy. It says it sets in five minutes, but again, before I move on to the next stage, I'm going to leave it 24 hours. Let's do it all, yeah. I'm going to put, I might add some more later. Yes. There we go. Oh, is that too much? Who knows? <laughs> I just got a dowel. Mix this around. You can see this, I use some stained veneers here. It depends what effect you want to go for. It does look uh, a bit childish. It's a bit like, I, I do like the natural tone woods in my mosaics. Some, some like the, the navy blue here is quite a nice veneer. Um, but I just used up what I had, got some oranges in there. And with the, I've got another one I'll show you in a minute, which is dry. I experimented using two pigments. I do not recommend that. I would just use one pigment. I wanted a nice gradient from black to white, but it just looked like it stained. So I would stick to one. Okay, that's pretty good. 
now I want to scoop this on. Am I going to risk it? Am I going to use the glue one? Okay, and now you want to... Oh no! Can you see it on the camera? I'm sorry, accents, to stain your bench. I have tissues. Ah, is that going to make it worse if I rub it? I'm going to leave it like that. <laughs> you want to scrape this in all the gaps. I actually could have put more black pigment in. It's a bit too uh, transparent, so... Yeah. I should have added more black in. But once you've got it in all the gaps, I wouldn't leave any on top. You want to scrape off all the excess because that's just going to make the sanding a lot It's going to make it harder, it's going to take a lot longer. The veneer I got is from the goodwoodveneerhub.com and you can buy like a craft pack, perfect for this. What? I don't make the veneers myself. No. <laughs> Natural wood veneers I've done, but I'm not going to stain it myself. I'm just... Okay, so this excess now. Scrape off. And again, I'd leave that 24 hours. And then once that's done, it's going to look like... This. Now this is, I quite like this one. This is what I mean by a simple pattern. I'm just going around the edge. This, I can imagine this on a Roman floor. Beautiful. And you want to clean this up now. You can use a scraper plane to get most of this off. Um, or, or just a car scraper. You want to camp it in between the dog holes. Once that's done, I would use an orbital sander. I've gone through the veneer before, so if you're using a low grit, it's literally very quick just to get the top surface of epoxy off, and then you go like very high to the um, you know the high grits, and you can start to feel the wood come through once the epoxy's gone. But remember, this is only 0.6 millimeters, so you don't have a lot to play with. Once that's done, you can pass this around. I know you're dying, dying to see this one, and then. Once that's done, it's going to look like this. Now, this is where I spoke about the, 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 the two pigments. You can see in the middle is black. It just looks like staining. It looks like it's gone wrong. The white looks a lot nicer. So this board would look a lot nicer if I just did in white. I probably wouldn't risk doing two. You can if you want. It's want to be risky. And yeah, so I can feel the wood now. It's time to finish it. You can finish that. Any way you want, wax, oil, lacquer. If you're going to make it a coaster, you're going to want a waterproof finish. Or a heat mat, you're going to want a heat proof finish. I'm using Chestnut Products Hard Wax Oil, which I love, thank you. And it's really easy to apply. You normally want to leave this on for five minutes and then wipe off the excess. But I'm going to be a rebel today. And you can see, this is a good part, you can start to see the veneer pop. Shoot, which camera should I do? Yeah, there we go. Wow, this is, this is why we do it. This, there we go. So you can see the tiles really start to darken. And you can just imagine the possibilities of the different patterns you've done. This is, these are very simple. You can spend hours on this. I've spent days making mosaic before with the tiles being, you know, that small. And you can get some really complicated things. I still haven't done yet, but I really want to make a coffee table with a mosaic all on the coffee table, a nice circular one with small tiles. I think that'll look really nice. All I've done at the moment is just, you know, the top of boxes. As you can see, this is a really simple process. Anyone can do it. Look at that. 
Ich weiß nicht, Sorry? Yeah. Yeah, so what I would do, what I'd do is if I'm making a dovetail box, I would cut a groove around the top, so I, I wouldn't like, you know, glue on top, it would be in the groove. I would make the pattern go further than the border and then trim it down to fit perfectly in the groove. That, you know, with something like this, okay, with this, there's not a border. So if I, if this side was, two millimeters if i cut two millimeters off this one and then one off that you might you would notice do you know what i mean but with this one if i cut more in this side because there's a border you would see more of that tile go than this one so you depending on the pattern you, you want to make it symmetrical if you're then going to trim it back so that it looks even on all the sides with something like this again it doesn't have a border so if it's like a little bit more cut off this side, it's still going to look good. You know what I'm saying? Have you got any other questions before I run away? You want to ask? Okay. You know, if you don't need to worry about adding the same amount of pigment because it's all going to blend in, it's all going to be the exact same. Yeah, so, hopefully, I've inspired you to do a mosaic yourself. Thank you. Thank you for watching. <laughs>